Hey everyone, it's Bob O'Mac here for Crisis in the Toyverse, and on today's show, we dive into the Mezco 112 Collective as we look at a Clockwork Orange Alex DeLarge action figure. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, I don't know a whole lot about Clockwork Orange. I've seen the movie like twice, I believe, maybe one and a half times, uh, but when I saw this figure go up on pre-order earlier this year... Uh, I thought it was really cool. It looked really fantastic, and uh, now that I have it in hand, uh, I really dig it, uh, like, a lot. And it really makes me want to go back and watch the film. Of course, I got Alex here all set up on the couch. Let me pull him off the couch, and I'll go over him a, a lot more in depth with everyone, okay? Here it is, out of the box, and like I said, uh, I really dig this guy. It's a little bit of a different action figure to have on your toy shelf. I think that's really cool. I think Mezco really put a lot of TLC into this guy because he looks fantastic. Let's go ahead and bring it in here and I'll talk about his first head sculpt here. Now, there is some debate among a lot of people where they're like, well, you know, in the promotional shots, he looked a lot better and yada, yada, yada. That may be or may not. I'm not one of those people that focuses that intensely on it. Unless it's a Ben Affleck head. Because then I go goo goo crazy for customs. Uh, but for as a standalone piece, this head really gets the job done. I think it looks pretty good like uh, Ian McDowell. Um, you know, pre-Dr. Loomis days. Pre-Wing Commander 4. Uh Bonus points for anybody who remembers Wing Commander 4. Uh, but I really do like this look. It came out quite good. Um, you got that Alex look going for it that just really shines. Uh, the hat's done quite good too. As for the costume, uh, it came out good. The pockets look very nice. Uh, the straps right here look pretty good. Uh, this middle piece right here came out good. There's a picture popping up of that so you can see it a little more in depth. You go to the back, it looks nice. Uh, it does, at first glance, look like this piece is removable, but I'm going to advise against trying to remove it. I think it's just the way they designed it. Maybe it does come off, and maybe I'm just too afraid to try to take it off. Uh, but we got the elastic straps here uh, that make up the suspenders that came out good. Uh, the side pieces here with the eyeballs came out great. There's a close-up of that, so you can see the detail on that. Um, and then, of course, the white slacks here, and the boots came out quite nice as well. Um, in terms of his articulation, let's just go ahead and break that down. Uh, he's got the, you know, head connected through the skull neck peg type thing going on here. So it's all one piece, uh, but you can look uh, down pretty good. Uh, he looks really mean and like a bad dude there. Uh, you can bring it back up about that much. You get some side to side, no problem. And of course, Exorcist 360. Um, in terms of the arms, mine go up about that much. You bring it back down, you can bring it forward quite a bit, and you can take it back quite a bit too. Uh, they do extend out. Uh, we have the swivel and hinge at the arm, no problems there. And then we have the ball peg at the hand that allows for uh, swivel and hinge action, like so. Now, in terms of the upper body, we do get some side to side because of that diaphragm joint and some rotation. As far as it going back, that's about as far back. Look at all this cat here. Uh, it goes back about that much. It goes forward about that much. And then uh, it does swivel at the bottom piece. Uh, it allows it to go forward and back some as well. Uh, in terms of the lower body, we have the legs on mine go out that far. I'm not going to push it that much further. Uh, he kicks forward quite well. And then we got the upper thigh cut right there built in. And then we have the double bend at the knees. And then we have the rotation at the boot. And then his feet kick up that much. They go back quite a bit. And then you do get a little bit of ankle rocking. 
Actually, a lot more than a little bit. It works quite good on mine. And, of course, peg holes on the bottom. So now that we've covered that, let's look at all the fun little toys that Alex comes with, and we'll go from there. So to start things off, what we have going on here are the different set of hands. We get a milk hand, which I'll show here in a moment. Uh, we get a set of relaxed hands, and then we get a set of gripping hands. And then, of course, he comes packed with the two fists. These all came out quite good. Let me just take all the other hands off here. And let me bring in the glass of milk. You, uh, you can't have... Ah, I apologize about that. I dropped the milk. Speaking of milk, here is the milk container. It's just got the white inside with the clear glass. And uh, you plug that in like so. And uh, you can hold this glass of milk, which is pretty cool. Another cool piece we have here is the cane. Um, now, some people would have liked for the cane to be removable with the piece off. Myself, personally, that's another piece for me to lose. So, I appreciate that they did this second piece here with the dagger as a separate spot. And I totally understand people's gripe about this not disconnecting and whatnot. I get it. I get it. But at the end of the day... Um, I am grateful that they included at least the knife and a full staff. And he holds it quite well, as you'll see in the photo. That should be popping up. And then the other cool set of accessories is we have this head, which is the beat-up head when he gets interrogated. Uh, this came out quite good. Um, it's a little soft, but um, at the end of the day, in terms of the sculpt, uh, I do like it. I like that they got the little detail there with the blood and whatnot and the bandage on the nose and the nice expression that he has. And then our second head, of course, is the singing in the rain head. Now, I didn't take any pictures of this guy pretty much with the singing in the rain look because I didn't want to get flagged or anything crazy, but... For all those uh, older viewers out there, you know what this head pretty much represents. And uh, it came out quite good. Let me just bring in the detail a little more here. Nice set of paint. And of course the hat looks good and the eyes came out great. And the expression is creepy yet fun. Thank you so much, Gene Kelly. And of course we got our Mez cocaine bag looking quite nice. We got our flight stand which we've seen plenty of times. Let me zoom out here. And uh, we have ourselves our base. And this looks really cool. For those who have their bases out, I'm sure they appreciate the color variation from a lot of the other bases we have in the Mezco line. Uh, this just really looks really cool. Um, so yeah, that pretty much covers accessories and whatnot. Let's go ahead and talk about a little size roundup and wrap this video up, everyone. So here we are with our size roundup. Um, it's only fitting to add another Mezco monster into the mix. That, of course, is Frankenstein on the left. And, of course, everyone's favorite Cape Crusader, Batman, on the other side. And, of course, we got Alex there in the middle. As you can see, he actually fits in very nicely with some various different Mezco lines. Um, overall, should you pick up this guy? Well, that depends on how big of a Clockwork Orange fan you are. Myself, personally, I'm not the hugest Clockwork Orange fan. But, I like cool looking figures. And I think this one looks quite good on your shelf. Or doing toy photography and whatnot. The real only minor gripe i have with this guy is i wish he had his companions with him um i think it would have really opened up a lot of toy photography shots and whatnot but it's not a deal breaker it's definitely not the end of the world as we know it so yeah guys if you get a chance and you want something like this in your collection go ahead and pick it up if you can find them at a good price so that pretty much does it as always thank you guys for stopping by Appreciate the love, the support, the likes, the comments, and whatnot. Always a blast. And uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to leave them in the comments. As you will see now, I have some sponsors popping up on the screen. If you get some free time, just click on the links below. Go check them out. It doesn't cost you anything. 
And um, yeah, I would appreciate it. And um, slideshow at the end, everyone. Take care. And until next time, great googly moogly. <laughs>